In our next tutorial, we're going to focus on four phase equilibria, three solids and a liquid. And when we have those four phases coexisting, it's called an invariant reaction because there are no degrees of freedom. So here we're going to look at how to represent those four phase equilibria and how we can reliably assign the correct equilibrium assemblage to those invariant reactions. Right, so we've looked at cases where a liquid is coexisting with one other solid phase and with two other solid phases. Now let's go to four phase equilibria, where the liquid is coexisting with three other solid phases. As we said earlier in these tutorials, the maximum number of phases that can coexist in a ternary system is four. And if we take away pressure, there are no degrees of freedom. So a four phase equilibrium is an invariant reaction and the temperature and the compositions of all of the coexisting phases are defined. First we'll look at a ternary eutectic, where every binary contains a eutectic, and the three eutectic valleys meet at a common point, which is called the ternary eutectic. So here's our space diagram. The AB has a eutectic, BC a eutectic, AC a eutectic, Here's the eutectic liquid in each of those three binaries, D, E, and F. They're all rolling downhill. And they meet at G, which is the ternary eutectic liquid. So you can think of this in our everyday example as three waterfalls all falling into a lake, but that lake instantly freezes because that's the lowest temperature which a liquid can coexist. So that's just summarizing what I said. I have three eutectic valleys, DG, EG, FG, and they meet at G. That's the ternary eutectic. The four phases coexist, and the equilibrium is liquid, is an equilibrium with alpha plus beta plus gamma. And if I'm cooling, I'm going from left to right. In this case, all of these are at the same temperature, so M, N, O and G in the middle, triangle, they're all coplanar, it's a planar triangle. It's simplest if we look at a ternary eutectic system where there is no solid solubility because the compositions of the three solid phases are by definition fixed at the pure species. So here we're looking at three binaries that are simple eutectics with no solid solubility. Let's sketch the liquidus projection of this example, where again we're assuming no solid solubility and there are no intermediate compounds. It's just A, B, and C, and they're mutually insoluble. Here's the liquidus projection. If we look at the A, B binary, D is the eutectic liquid in that binary. B, C, F is the composition of its eutectic liquid, and E, the one for A, C, these are the three eutectic valleys, and the confluence is at G, the eutectic liquid. We're going to see later on it's very important to be able to label the primary phase fields. In other words, to project the liquid surfaces onto this projection. Hopefully you can see here that A, D, G, E in this area, the first solid phase to form would be A. Between D, G, F, and B, in other words, this liquidus surface here, shown on the space diagram, that's associated with B. So it's the primary phase field of B. And in this area here on the projection, C, F, G, E, that's this liquidus surface where the primary phase is C. So, that's the primary phase. so if I'm at a temperature that's above the ternary eutectic, it's possible to have three different three-phase regions. Let's highlight those using some tie triangles. So for example here, three-phase equilibrium between liquid lying on EG somewhere and C and A, I'd use this tie triangle. And this would be the equilibrium reaction, liquid in equilibrium with A plus C. Then we could have a three-phase equilibrium between A, B, and liquid. The liquid would have to lie somewhere on this DG eutectic valley. 
And when it does so, and those three phases coexist, in other words, before the liquid reaches G itself, I'd use a tie triangle, compositions on the vertices A, B, and liquid. Now on the BC binary, coming out of that is the eutectic liquid F. And so now I'll have another three-phase potential equilibrium, liquid in equilibrium with C plus B, and I'd use this tie triangle. And then at the ternary eutectic, where the liquid reaches G, then I'd use this construct, shown in the hatched red lines, where I'm joining the three solid compositions at the vertices of the triangle, and I place my eutectic liquid composition in the middle, G, and connect that to each of the solids using these three hatched lines. And overall, this represents a four-phase equilibrium, liquid at G in equilibrium with A plus B plus C. Let's illustrate the use of this through a crystallization path. So we'll take that ternary eutectic liquid as projection, and we'll do a crystallization path for this composition shown here in orange. First of all, what do I get at the end of all of this? I just look at the solid state equilibria. Well, it's just no solubility, so it's the pure species. So I'm going to end up with solid A plus B plus C. How does it get there? Well, first, we see the overall composition will first cut through the primary phase field associated with A. It's A's liquidus surface here in blue. So the first phase to come out is A. Now we can map the composition, the path of the liquid, because as A crystallizes out of the overall composition, the liquid composition will move in the opposite direction, in the direction shown by this arrow, a straight line away from A. At some point, it could reach this eutectic valley where three phases would coexist, the new phase being C. And when the liquid reaches this eutectic valley, I'd have a tie triangle that joins the liquid, C, and A. Now the liquid is going to move down the valley. The solid compositions don't shift, but the tie triangle then would move in this direction with just as I reach G, this being composition of the liquid, this being A, this being C. And if I look at the overall composition, I see it lies within the triangle. That tells me that while during that three-phase equilibrium I've formed some A and C, I still haven't got rid of all of the liquid. I'm going to undergo the ternary eutectic reaction. Now when I reach the ternary eutectic, I'll use my construct here showing in red to denote the liquid is now in equilibrium with, and since I'm cooling, it's forming more A, more C, and now some B, and I'll stay at that temperature until the liquid is consumed. So I undergo this ternary tectic reaction, and then I'm done. Now let's look at some other types of invariant four-phase equilibria, in particular two types of ternary peritectics. And first we'll look at the so-called 2-2 peritectic that involves the reaction of L plus alpha in equilibrium with two other solid phases, beta and gamma. This type of equilibrium can arise where the binaries have one peritectic and two eutectics, so let's assemble the space diagram from those binaries. Here I've chosen AB to be my peritectic. Here we can see the liquid composition lying outside the two solid compositions, alpha and beta. Let's add C. So AC is eutectic, a little bit of solubility of C giving a gamma solid solution. And then BC also forming a eutectic. So now I've colored in the various liquidus surfaces in the space diagram. We can see there are three associated with alpha, beta, and gamma. This is the alpha liquidus surface. So if the composition was to cut and hit this, the first phase to crystallize would be alpha. Similarly, this is the beta primary phase field, and this is the gamma primary phase field. 
Before we turn to the ternary equilibrium reaction, let's just identify the various liquids that emanate from those three binaries. So first, here's DG. D is the peritectic liquid in AB, and it comes down in temperature the way I've drawn it, down to G. And that's the path of the liquid that partakes in the reaction emanating from that binary, which is liquid plus alpha in equilibrium with beta. EG, that is the eutectic valley coming out of the AC system, and therefore it's associated with this three-phase equilibrium, liquid in equilibrium with alpha plus gamma. And then the third binary is GF, and that's the path of the liquid that partakes in a eutectic reaction, liquid in equilibrium with beta plus gamma. Notice the direction of the arrows, which indicate decreasing temperature. But for these two binaries, the arrows are moving downwards. They meet at G, but out of G, we see that the eutectic valley going into the BC binary, that's running downhill. It's running down in temperature. So we have two coming in, if you like, and one coming out. This is called a 2-2 type ternary peritectic. And the equilibrium is liquid plus alpha in equilibrium with beta plus gamma. Where are the compositions of all the various phases? G is the composition of the ternary peritectic liquid. N is the composition of beta, M of alpha, and O of gamma. And all three of these compositions lie in the same plane. They're at the same temperature. It's a fixed, defined temperature. Notice now that I'm using a trapezoid to represent the four-phase equilibrium. Let's just blow that up on the side here. So again, I'm pulling out my compositions that are partaking in the ternary peritectic. They lie at the corners of this trapezoid. And notice here that the liquid composition at G lies outside the triangle formed by the three coexisting solid phases. And so it's similar to the binary peritectics. The liquid was outside of the coexisting solid phases. The same is true here. Let's look at the liquidus projection. First of all, here are the various liquids coming out of the binaries out of AB, downhill, out of AC, downhill, meeting at G, and then out of G going down into the BC system is my other eutectic valley GF. And I've just used hatch lines for the solid compatibilities. And again, just translating those primary phase fields from the space diagram to the liquidus projection. In yellow here, this is the alpha primary phase field, so if my overall composition lies in this area, the first phase to crystallize will be alpha. Here's beta, and down below is gamma. And we'll use this later on to recrystallization paths. The second type of peritectic is the so-called 3 to 1 equilibrium. This occurs where one of our binaries is a eutectic, here I've shown the AB system, and I have two peritectics. So again, let's just build up the space diagram. There's AC, peritectic, the liquid composition outside the two solids. And now in BC, a second peritectic. Again, the liquid lying outside, in this case, gamma and beta. Here are the liquidus curves coming out of each binary system, and they meet at G, which is the peritectic liquid. We want to notice again and be careful about reading the arrows. So we're coming down in temperature out of the eutectic in the AB system, but then coming out of the peritectic reaction, the liquidus moves to lower temperatures in both binaries. So one in and two out. And we'll come back to that point in a little bit. Let's colour in our primary phase fields. There are again three of them. Alpha, beta, and gamma. Let's just be clear on the three-phase equilibria. So when my liquid is along DG, 
It's coexisting with alpha and beta of various compositions as they come into the ternary. E.g., this is a peritectic reaction, and we can always go to the binary to make sure. So here the liquid is outside alpha and gamma, so it's liquid plus alpha in equilibrium with the phase in the middle, which is gamma. And GF, that's also a peritectic. This is the liquid lying outside beta and gamma, and so in this case liquid plus beta equals gamma. Where the three meet, we have a three to one ternary peritectic. And the reaction, or the equilibrium, is liquid plus alpha plus beta in equilibrium with gamma on the right. That's the phraseology, three on the left, one on the right, three to one. Again, we'll use a construct to represent the four phase equilibrium. Let's just notice what the compositions of all the phases are. When I have this equilibrium, alpha has the composition M, beta has the composition N, gamma has the composition O, and G is the liquid lying outside the MON triangle once again. And of course, this is a plane. The reaction takes place at a fixed temperature. It's invariant. Four phases coexist. Let's just pull that off the diagram to have a look. So again, this is my four-phase equilibrium representation. They're all coexisting together. The liquid outside this solid subtriangle, thus a peritectic. Let's draw a liquid as projection. Here it is. Let's dwell on a couple of things. The primary phase fields. Hopefully we're getting used to these now. Alpha primary phase field, beta primary phase field, and the gamma. Here are the liquidus lines where I have three phase equilibria meeting at G. This is the ternary peritectic, and I've projected onto here the compositions of the solid phases as they were shown on the space diagram. So again, the liquidus projection contains all of the projected solid state and liquid equilibria. So we've seen three common types of ternary invariants, the ternary eutectic, and two different variations of a peritectic equilibrium. Well, how do we identify them? What's the simplest way to identify them for more complicated systems? Well, we use the primary phase fields on the liquidus projection. For a ternary eutectic, that's a confluence of three liquidus valleys, and also a confluence of three primary phase fields. If I can identify from the liquidus projection and see that all of the liquidus valleys are moving to lower temperature. That clearly identifies it as a ternary eutectic. And in this case, then liquid is in equilibrium with all of the primary phases around it, alpha plus beta plus gamma. So typically a ternary eutectic is pretty easy to identify just from the arrows and the primary phase fields around it. And again, it's equivalent, if you like, to three waterfalls coming into a lake. But we know at the ternary eutectic, after the reaction is completed, all of the liquid's gone, it's consumed. So actually, the lake instantly freezes. So waterfalls coming in, eutectic valleys coming in. But this ternary eutectic, the lake, is the lowest temperature which any liquid can exist. And so we have spontaneous freezing. We've seen before that there are two types of ternary peritectics. So let us look at a method through which we can reliably identify the equilibrium for both of those. We start with the 2-2 ternary peritectic, which is also called a tributary peritectic. In this case, we have two liquid valleys coming into the invariant reaction and one emanating, one coming out. Here's my glacier example. Two glaciers coming in, merging, and one coming out. And the hillsides, if you like, are the liquidus surfaces. We see here, coming into the peritectic, these two liquid valleys share a primary phase field, in this case, alpha. And so the reaction liquid plus alpha in equilibrium with beta plus gamma 
can always be identified by ascertaining the primary phase field between the two incoming valleys. For the right-hand side, we just have to look at what the two exiting primary phases are on either side of this valley coming out of the reaction. Here we see on one side we have beta, and on the other side we have gamma. For any system, the 2-2 peritectic equilibrium is liquid plus the primary phase field between the two incoming valleys in equilibrium with the two exiting primary phase fields. At the peritectic temperature, when the four phases are coexisting, we use our trapezium with the compositions of all the participating phases at the corners, alpha, beta, and gamma. And as we noted earlier, the liquid composition lies outside the solid subtriangle, which is characteristic of any peritectic. Well, we have two phases coming in and two different phases coming out. So which of these two phases is consumed? It could be liquid or it could be alpha. If the overall composition lies within this alpha, beta, gamma subtriangle, the liquid is consumed and our solidification is complete. If the overall composition lies in the beta gamma liquid subtriangle shown here in green then in this case alpha is consumed in this ternary peritectic. We're left with beta gamma and liquid and so the solidification is not complete and we would have to go to lower temperature and look at that three-phase equilibrium to determine when crystallization is over. The other type of peritectic that we have seen is the 3 to 1 ternary peritectic, or a so-called distributary peritectic. In this case, we have one liquid valley coming in, with primary phases alpha and beta either side of it, and two liquid valleys coming out, shown here through the arrows. And in between those two exiting liquid valleys, we have a common primary phase gamma. Here's my geographic example, in this case volcanic flows, one flow coming down and then distributing into two subflows at a certain point, which would be our ternary peritectic. And so the reaction, liquid plus alpha plus beta and equilibrium with gamma, can always be determined in the following way. It's liquid plus the two incoming primary phases. In other words, the primary phase is either side of the liquid valley coming into the peritectic. And on the right-hand side, whatever primary phase is between the exiting valleys, whatever primary phase they have in common. So you can see the key to this is identifying the primary phase fields. And once we have done so, we can reliably characterize what the ternary equilibrium is. Paying attention, of course, to the arrows, which tell us in which direction temperature is decreasing. Again, we can use the trapezium to connect with the compositions, done here. In this case, we can see that there are three phases on the left and one on the right. So potentially, we could consume liquid, alpha, or beta. Which do we lose? If the composition that we're considering in orange here lies within the alpha beta gamma subtriangle then that will tell us that liquid is consumed so we run out of liquid we're left with alpha beta and gamma and in this case the solidification would be completed by going through this peritectic reaction if the overall composition doesn't lie within the alpha beta gamma subtriangle then liquid remains. And now we see which other subtriangle does the composition lie within. For example, in green here, my overall composition is lying within the alpha gamma liquid subtriangle. And in this case, that tells us that beta was consumed by the ternary peritectic reaction. 
The other possibility is that my overall composition lies in the beta gamma liquid subtriangle, in which case alpha would be consumed and we'd be left with beta, gamma and liquid. So three possibilities. Solidification complete if it's in the alpha, beta, gamma. In green here, if it's located in the alpha, gamma, liquid subtriangle, beta is consumed by the reaction. And finally, if it lies in the beta, gamma, liquid subtriangle, alpha is consumed. Most real systems contain intermediate phases. And so now we should look at how those start to make the phase diagram look a little bit more intimidating. And we will do that in our next video.